Sarah, what, what do you make of this report? As someone who has, has worked very hard to, to, to bring all this to light, um, what do you make of, of what has now come out? I'm pleased it's um, quite thorough because it's, only, it's gone and shown now everything we've said for the last nine years. Um, and it's OK doing all these reports, but it has to be put in practice straight away. People are dying and um, they're just not accepting their role. This, as the report says, there was no professional curiosity Never mind professional curiosity. What about any curiosity at all? There was blatant similarities that were even noticed. I mean, for you, how are you feeling after reading this report? I know that you have read it. Do you feel as though this is a level of justice for you? Or do you feel frustrated that this is something that you've been saying and you've known for a very, very long time that's only finally being revealed to the public? I do feel there's a, a, a level of justice because now it's out in the open and it's what I've been saying all along. And now it's out in the public domain. It can't be ignored anymore. It's OK that you met saying that they're putting it into practice. They're going to do this. They're going to do the training. But people are dying every single day waiting for the police to get their act together. Why is it? I mean, you you said that you know the, the a lack of, as it says in the report, professional curiosity, but but any sort of curiosity. Why do you think there is that lack of curiosity? I mean, in in a case like this, is it homophobia? Definitely, definitely. It was said in the inquest that um, my liaison officer turned round and said that um, well. All gays, they, they go to orgies, they take drugs, things like that. Um, then ask the question, when did Anthony go to an orgy? So, oh, well, he didn't, but that, I thought that's what they all did. Yeah, which, which doesn't help it. I mean, I know you, you spoke to Cressida <laughs> Dick about this, didn't you? I mean, didn't she say, well, there are gay officers in the force? Yes. And I, I actually said to her that, well, what difference does that make? Does it make... The, the remaining police, not homophobic. And she was saying that, you know, a th nearly a third of the force are, uh, from the LGBT community, etc. And I just couldn't understand how that was relevant. What was your experience with the police in, in handling Anthony's case and, and your relationship with your family liaison officer as well? How did you find that? It was absolutely diabolical, and I'd said to Cressida Dick at the time that I would not rest until that officer was no longer a family liaison officer. He was absolutely appalling. He was rude, ignorant. I shared the same family liaison officer as the Whitworth family, and they said exactly the same. Which is horrific, actually, when you've been through what, what, I, and what you were going through at that point... To, I mean, the, the implication is that you're actually getting no sympathy or support no. at all. No, no support at all, which is what they're supposed to be there to do and to pass information on and take information. And I got none of that whatsoever. I mean, the tragedy with all, the, with all of this, and it, as it points out in the report, was that if they'd worked harder on Anthony's case, the, these other murders could well have been prevented. They would have been prevented if they'd have actually bothered to investigate Anthony's death at all. They definitely would have been prevented because parts would have been off the street. What do the force need to learn from this? That young men just don't die in the street. Simple as that. They don't... You know, there was four in such close proximity Surely that should have raised, you know, eyebrows to what is going on here. Um, they need to start at the very bottom, I think. The training and the leadership, more than anything. They need, you know, these new trainees and everything need guidance and leadership to be shown how to do the job. I mean... Within all, do you have confidence that that can happen? I mean, the, obviously, leadership has changed at the Metropolitan Police since all this, but are, do, are you confident 
that actually, because I mean, starting at the bottom is is great, Sarah. But you've obviously you still need the leadership at the top to make that happen, yeah. don't you? So, you, are you confident yeah. that that is in place now? No. Not at all. And I don't think in my lifetime it'll be fixed. I think it's going to be a long, long journey. Why is that? I think because it's ingrained. I think it is totally ingrained in the Met and it needs from the top down changing. And that will take years, I think. Root and branch reform. It, it will take a long time. We've got seeing some photos here um, of Anthony. Um, it's it's really moving to hear you speak today. Um, and let's hope that the, the changes are made yeah. and lessons are learnt from this. Well, you've you've, you've got to hope so, haven't you? Um, in in terms in terms of that reform, though. Well, it, it must be very disheartening for those people. I mean, you must have come across officers who do a, who do a great job, who are who are passionate about oh, what yeah. they about what they do. So, I mean, wh wh why do you think some people are entering the force when they're just not of that mindset? Then they, you know they don't seem to want to bring justice. They don't have that curiosity to solve a case. I don't know. Maybe it's the fact that they think the job will probably be easy. But, um, yeah, I've met some fantastic police officers during this course. And my, my liaison officer at the moment um, is amazing. Absolutely exactly what you would want a family liaison to be. And he's pulled apart from the first one. Mm -hmm. I just think it is in that person. You know, he has a, the, the good officers have a passion for doing what they need to do. And... I don't, I don't know how they're going to fix it. I really don't, because you can't force somebody to be passionate about a role. No. Is this no. about is this about vetting then? Is this about making sure yes. that a person has the right characteristics t to do a good job? Yes, definitely. Um, I was actually talking to uh, a police officer, and I was saying about um, they have so many. You know, they have quarters of they have. They need so many Asians, so many blacks in the force and thing. I said, it, it should have nothing to do with race, gender, anything. It should be about that person. Mm. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's someone wanting to do the job, whoever they are. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree totally. Yeah. Let's just bring up that picture of Anthony again, because, because part of the problem here is that someone has looked at Anthony, your son, <laughs> and made some assumptions. They've made assumptions yeah. about him. That, that were not right and they've, and they've not cared enough to work out what has happened. Tell us about Anthony. Yeah. What, what, what was he like? Um, he was very loud. Very, he was very funny. He had the most driest sense of humour. And um, he, he was passionate about his friends. And he just wanted to be famous. He's always said from being about 14, one day... Used to all, he always called me Cesar, he never called me ma'am. Cesar, one day you'll see my name up in lights, I'll be famous. Well, he is now, but for all the wrong reasons, you know. Um, he just had a passion for anything unusual. That's why he loved London. Yeah, and um, we, you must have been, well, I say you must have been worried, maybe not. Um, Oh, I know. Oh. I mean, as, a, as, a, as a fellow northerner, as a fellow northerner, mm -hmm. parents don't seem to like it when you move down to the big smoke. But did you no. have concerns no. when it happened? Yes, definitely. I mean, um, he moved down just after his 18th birthday, and he was only in London three weeks, and he was mugged. Well, I cried down the phone to him. I was saying, "Come home, come home. You know, you'll be you'll be safe up north, sort of thing." And it's not. No, I'm staying. I don't want to come back. And yeah, I, I spoke to him at least four or five times a week. I was worried sick from the day he moved down here. Yeah. And what about? And, and let's be honest, this scumbag behind all of this, who who police weren't bothered about enough to properly investigate. What do you make of him? I just think he's a sad, ugly old man. And I'm so glad that he's got a whole life tariff. Can you imagine waking up every day knowing you're never, ever, ever going to get out? That, to me, is 
the greatest punishment. Mm. Mm. No, I would, I would agree. Um, mm. Sarah, we really appreciate you talking to us this morning and, and so in depth as well. Thank you very much indeed. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah.